In today's video, we're going to break down how cheats actually work in Fortnite. We'll be covering six key concepts you'll hear often in the game hacking world. Internal, external, DMA, kernel level cheats, hooking, and the use of virtual machines. Fortnite's anti-cheat system, easy anti-cheat, is one of the more advanced protections in gaming. So understanding how these methods interact with it can give you a clear view of both how cheats function and how they're detected. Now let's talk about hooking, a core technique in many game cheats, but one that's less common in Fortnite specifically due to how aggressive EAC is. Hooking means intercepting a function call, either inside the game or at the system level. For example, you might hook a rendering function to draw an ESP overlay, or hook get a sync key state to detect input without being seen. In older games or weaker anti-cheat environments, hooking is standard, but in Fortnite, most public hooks are quickly detected. EAC checks for detoured functions, trampolines, VMT swaps, and inline hooks. So while some Fortnite internal cheats do use stealthy hooks, like shadow VMTs or manual syscall rerouting, it's not the main technique anymore. Most developers either avoid hooking altogether or use kernel-level alternatives that don't leave obvious traces. External cheats, on the other hand, operate outside of the Fortnite process. They read game memory from a separate application, often using Windows API functions to access the memory space of the Fortnite process. This method is much safer detection-wise, since the cheat doesn't modify Fortnite directly. However, external cheats lack direct access to game functions, so they rely on interpreting raw memory. For example, calculating positions and drawing ESP overlays. External cheats are generally slower and more resource intensive, but they remain a popular choice due to their lower detection risk. Let's begin with internal cheats. These are injected directly into Fortnite's game process. This gives the cheat full access to internal functions, game memory, and rendering which means it can interact directly with the game engine. That's why internal cheats can run fast, smooth, and accurately, offering features like aimbot, ESP, and even manipulation of recoil or bloom. But there's a downside. Injection is highly detectable. Since you're modifying Fortnite's memory space, EAC actively scans for unusual modules or hooks. Internal cheats often require custom loaders, manual mapping, or advanced bypasses to avoid detection. Now let's talk about DMA, direct memory access. This approach involves using external hardware, usually a PCIe card, to read memory directly from the system without going through the operating system or CPU. In the context of Fortnite, this means the cheat doesn't run on the same PC at all. It might connect to a second computer, pulling memory data in real time and feeding ESP or radar data to a clean system. DMA is incredibly stealthy and very difficult for EAC to detect, but the trade-off is cost, complexity, and the need for custom firmware and drivers. Next, we have kernel mode cheats. Most applications, including Fortnite, run in user mode, a restricted layer of the operating system. Kernel mode cheats, however, operate at the system level. By writing a driver, you can access protected memory intercept system calls, and bypass many user mode anti-cheat scans. In Fortnite, kernel cheats are typically used to hide cheat processes, spoof system data, or block EAC's detection routines. These cheats are powerful, but extremely risky. Poor implementation can crash your system or trigger detection immediately. Lastly, let's talk about virtual machines. While you won't be running Fortnite effectively inside a VM, since most anti-cheats, including EAC, detect and block VM environments, they're widely used in cheat development and testing. Developers can reverse engineer Fortnite builds, monitor memory behavior, and test detection without risking their main system. VMs also allow for automated analysis of updates and EAC patches. So here's a quick recap. Internal cheats give full access, but are high risk. External cheats are safer, but limited. DMA provides hardware level stealth with complex setups. Kernel cheats are powerful, but difficult to build safely. Hooking is a classic technique, but 
less effective in Fortnite today. VMs are essential for cheat development, not for actual gameplay. Fortnite's anti-cheat is constantly evolving, and so are the methods used to bypass it. This video is meant to educate, not encourage, and give a better technical understanding of what's really happening behind the scenes. Thanks for watching. If you found this breakdown helpful, drop a like and consider subscribing. I'll be covering more deep dive topics on reverse engineering, cheat development, and anti-cheat defenses in future videos.